the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Have you checked your fruit today? Have you checked the characteristics of the Holy Spirit in your life? You know, fruit sometimes me, I, I, I listen to it. It's okay for your brothers and they probably get kind of weary on that part about saying checking your fruit because sometimes I think of fruit, they go fruit loops, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, or, or colorful things, right? But when it comes to checking fruits, and check the characteristics of the Holy Spirit in you. What, what the, and we're talking about the fruits of the Spirit. And if you don't know what the fruits of the Spirit is one word singular fruit, but it's nine characteristics in there. And this is what we want to make sure you get. Because, you know, like I said, I, sometimes you may get upset, but the bottom line is he's really telling you, this is what you're going to work on. I think sometimes it's easier for people to work on being religious than being, than being fruit. Because then you can hide your fruit by being religious. Look at this in Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, which is patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, which is faithfulness, meekness, temperance, which is self-control. Against such there is no law. Those are the characteristics of the fruits of the Spirit. That, and those that characteristics come with the Holy Spirit and resides in you and in me. That's not something that I make. It's something that he does in my life and in your life. And, and, and Bob, Bob said, you have to bear fruit, you know? And, you know, we have scriptures about that, but the bottom line says you can't do it without him, though. You can't bear fruit without him. But the bottom line is he wants these characteristics and the characteristics coming and manifesting our lives, and that's something we want to work on daily. And, you know, don't let people try to test you when you try to work on your fruit, when you're trying to sit there and bear good fruit. It's, they don't do that. You just need to sit there and say, man, I have not arrived yet, but I'm working on it. And that's more important to God than, than your approval and your expectations. You want to pluck my nerve. You want to find the button to push. But God is sitting there saying is, you focus on pleasing him, not reacting to people. People want to push the button. Life wants to push our buttons. But we need to be able to say, I'm going to abide in him. That even in my distress, even in my hard times, I know I need to trust in him. I need to know that he'll never leave me, even though everything else may leave me and forsake me. He will. So now we're talking about it. It's why have you checked your fruit? Have you checked check your patience? And that's a very challenging. I guarantee you, most people, when they talk about patience, that's when they sit there and say, man, I need to cultivate that in my life. And, you know, I think the importance of patience is the fact is that if you just recognize that this time in this life is only for a moment and that people have things that they got to work on just like you, then I think you can sit there and have patience with one another. You want people to have patience with you, then you give patience to other people. That's the characteristic of the spirit. You just, you give and it shall be given. Good measure, press down, shaking together, run unto men, give it unto your bosom. If you give love, you get love. If you give patience, you get patience. You, if you want to give peace, you give peace, you give peace. Just focus on those things on a daily, daily walk in life, and you'll find out. It'll be all right. <laughs> It'll be all right. You know, God bless you. You know, so the scripture I had today, the peace is in Romans 5, uh, starting in verse 1. They, they got a subtitle here. They're talking about peace with God through faith. Uh, it says verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God, our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into what? His grace, where we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. Knowing that tribulation does what work is patience. You're going to go through tests, but it helps build your patience. It helps you build your stance 
and, and to be able to endure situations over as they come up again. Look at this, it says in verse 4, and patience, experience, and experience hope, knowing that it's going to be all right. I know I'm going to get through this. I, I know he's going to bring me through. I, it's going to be all right. And, and that's, that's from experience. So patience of dealing with people, different types of people, just use your experience to help you understand that your hope is in him, God Almighty. Verse 5, and look at this, hope make us not ashamed. You know, hope is another for, uh, part of the, of the word faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But the fact is, I like what scripture is saying, and hope make us not ashamed because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts and by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. See, I, I, maybe you not been in that area called ungodly, but I have. And therefore, he died for the ungodly. See, he didn't die for the super saint. The super saint became super saint through Jesus Christ. He didn't die for religious people. When people came religious because they came into or they, they accepted Jesus Christ in first life and they took on the character and mannerism of, of, of religion. But in reality, he died for the ungodly. And some people got that that's where they came from. Hmm. Tell me about it. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God for our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Some people say, what's that atonement? Well, the, the term atonement itself is, is being covered. Your, your transgression being covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. But you know, one thing about the Old Testament, when they use the blood of sacrifice of animals, the atonement, the, the, and their, their area and their grace and dispensation, it didn't hide the consciousness of sin. The consciousness of sin remained. But when you come into the body of Christ, when you come into Jesus Christ, when he said he has forgiven your sins, they are forgiven. When he said cast from the far the east and the west, they have been cast from the far the east and the west. When he said you have grace and mercy, so therefore when you fall, you have the grace and mercy that he gives you to get back up. That's the part about having the, the, the patience to one another because that's what he gives us. You, some of us have been in, in the body of Christ for a long time, but think back about how you came in. Think about where you were. Think about what short fault you may have in your life. God is in there saying is, my patience possesses the soul. You have to have your patience because that's what life is. Somebody said, man, I don't want to hear this no more. But you know what? You got to bear these fruit. And God wants you to. Have you checked your fruit today? Have you checked your fruit today? Guess what? I'm checking mine. I'm working on it. But I like that patience I need. I like that love I need. I like that joy I need. I hope you enjoyed the video. Check your fruit daily. God bless. Bye-bye.